Okay, so the third and final part of this required practical is distillation of your product. So in part two, we left off with adding some anhydrous uh, calcium chloride to the product to um, get rid of any water that still was in there. All right. Now, if there are any final impurities, then distillation is going to get rid of them. Okay, or not get rid of them, but separate them. So the first thing we need to do is to transfer our product into a round bottom flask. So I'm going to pour that in. Okay. And okay, so there's my product. I'm just going to pop it in the cork stand for a moment because I'm going to then add to this, if I take the funnel out, um, I'm going to add, where are they? There they are, some anti bumping granules. Okay? Now the purpose of the anti-bumping granules is to ensure a smooth boil. Now what that means is that when we perform our distillation and when this is heated, it's not going to boil so vigorously that it's going to come up this tube and into the condenser. Because if that happens, then we've got immediate contamination. Because if there are any impurities in here, then they're going to come up and they're going to go down into the condenser and then we're going to get them in our flask here where we're going to collect our pure, hopefully, product. What we want is to ensure a smooth boil so that the only thing that comes up and out of here and into the condenser is the vapour. Okay, because obviously distillation separates products based on their boiling point, condensation point. Okay, so I've got my anti-bumping granules in there and I can then put that here and I need another clip. There over there. I will get one, I will get one. I've already spilled half the stuff over the desk and I managed to get conch hydrochloric acid on my skin. So, um, so let's try and be slightly better this time. Okay, pop on the clip, make sure it's the right, right way. It's not small bit, a small bit, big bit, big bit, and then that's nice and secure. Okay, now what I've got here, if I turn it around to show you, is called a heating mantle. Now, in reality, in the lab, you probably have to use a Bunsen burner, or better still, this isn't a Bunsen burner, it's a micro burner. It's the ones that if you have your lessons in F8, you always take out the cupboard and I have to say, put it away, that's a micro burner. And the reason that you'd use a micro rather than a Bunsen burner, but better still perhaps a boiling water bath, is you need to heat this quite gently. Because your product has a boiling point of about 50 degrees, I want to say, I can't remember, it's about 50, 50 51 maybe. So you don't want it too hot. So a heating mantle is a really nice piece of equipment for this um, because you can control the temperature. So we do just need to plug it in. Okay, and I won't turn it on just yet. Right, at the other end then, I need something to collect my condensed purified product. And then I've got my condenser tube here, my Liebig condenser, and that is hooked up to the taps. Now what you can't see, and I can't reach to turn it, so just listen basically. We have, there should be a slight gradient here, you can see this goes down, and the water should go in, okay, so this is the, where it's coming in from, at the lowest point of gravity. And then this one that's attached here is free, and that goes into the sink. And then I can turn that on, Okay, so water's going in, nice cold water to condense those vapours, alright. Um, so, before I then turn on the heating mantle, final thing to say is we need to obviously put our thermometer in. Now, if I just do that, that is wrong, okay. And a common question for this required practical is actually to draw this apparatus, not artistically, okay, we don't want your artist, artistic interpretation of the clamping stand or anything like that, but common source of error. 
the bulb of the thermometer, okay, the bulb of the thermometer needs to be in line with what's called the side arm, okay, the side arm. So you might need to push it down. That's perfect, okay. So that's stoppered, and you can see hopefully that the bulb of the thermometer is perfectly in line with the side arm, okay. So I can now turn the heating mantle on and I can really control the heat with this heating mantle um, and if you go on to, to do any lab based courses at university, which I'm sure the majority of you will, you will use these um, much more commonly than you would use at a Bunsen burner. That's really all there is to say, okay, I'm not going to make you uh, wait literally for a pot to boil um, in this video, you need to just make sure that you are paying attention to that temperature. As I said, it has quite a low boiling point. And once you get to, I think it's about 55, you need to turn it off because otherwise you're starting to get into the realms of the boiling points of any possible impurities. Okay, that's it. You need to be able to draw any of the equipment that we've used in this video. You need to be able to explain why you do all of the stages that you do. You need to be able to state the impurities and state how you get rid of them. And you could also possibly be asked to test for the purity of your final product. There could be a question linking it perhaps to testing for the presence of chloride ions. Uh, it could be that you're going to test your sample using chromatography, uh, you might test for any number of functional groups, um, so just be aware that those are some possible further questions. Okay, that's it from me on Required Practical 5. Thank you for the best.